Wireless CarPlay and Android Auto are finally here on Teslas in 2024. If you've ever wanted to run Waze on your Tesla and even move things around with your finger, you can totally do that. You want to launch Audible or another media streaming app, you can do that as well. Or you just want the full-on CarPlay experience with messages and Siri and other apps on your car, you can now do that as it's finally here. Again, both CarPlay and Android Auto are here and totally working on your Tesla in 2024. It's actually way easier to do this than you think and you don't need anything but just one little special box that just has one cable to give it power. That's it, no having to take apart your dash, no having to mess with screws or wires, just one little box to make this wireless magic happen. It's really easy to do it and let me show you how. Okay, so I'm assuming you clicked on this video not because you care about Tesla and the politics between Apple and Google and why CarPlay isn't here. You just want to get CarPlay or Android Auto on your Tesla, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. But first, a couple of quick questions to clear the air here. Uh, number one, this is not sponsored by any sort of CarPlay solution. Uh, you're welcome to buy your own thing, whatever you want to do. Though if you do go with the one I'm showing off this video, you will get a discount. I'll link down below. Also, you can actually do this yourself. If you've got the time and the patience and some little uh, Android uh, microcomputers, you can actually build this whole thing yourself. I've done a video on this before. I'll try to leave that link down below. It's not for the faint of heart, but if you've got a little bit of time and you don't want to go with a pre-made solution, you don't have to actually buy one of these. You can just build it yourself if you want to. So I'm um, just going to say that and put that out there. But I will say that I've enjoyed sort of the pre-made solutions because they're basically plug and play. So this is from a company called Carlin kit. It's the T2C. Uh, I've got a coupon code. Again, I'll leave the link down below. I've tried a couple of them. They all basically work the same. And I'll come to a couple of common criticisms later on once I get this up and running. But just sort of to clear the air here, that's how that is. Not going to get into the politics between all this and sort of the nitty gritty. Let me just sort of show you how to set this up and how it works and also help you diagnose some of the most common problems you might run into. So basically how a box like this works is it's tricking two different things to think there's something else. It's going to trick your phone into thinking either Android or iOS that this is a car head unit, so it's going to go into phone mode to give you CarPlay or Android Auto, and it's tricking your Tesla into thinking that it's a Wi-Fi hotspot and that it's just a regular old website, allowing you to pull it up in the browser and get CarPlay or Android Auto. There are a couple of different uh, ports and stuff on this box. There's a micro uh, SIM uh, slot, but I don't think you need a slim, uh, SIM in most cases. Uh, it also is pretty slim, and basically all you've got to do is power this with USB-C in your car and um, get it up and running and just that. It's just one cable, just needs power. You can literally just put it down here, shove it away, close the drawer, never have to look at it, interact with it because all of the magic is going to happen on your screen and wirelessly with your phone. All right, so the box is booting up, and I will make one point here, and that is that before you start to mess with anything on the car, you want to make sure the box is up to date, because if you're having any sort of issues or the car is not connecting, if you try to jump ahead in the settings, it's not going to work, uh, because uh, typically the box is out of date. So first thing I would always recommend is to connect your phone to the box first, make sure it's all up to date, which I'll show you how to do, and then proceed to loading it up on your Tesla. So under Wi-Fi here, we're going to select Auto Kit. And then the password is going to be 88. So if I can try to do this with one hand, it's 88888888. Hit join. And then it should connect via Wi-Fi to the box, which it did. And then the next thing we want to do is connect directly from our phone to the box by finding the IP address. I know it sounds complicated. I promise you it's not. Just go ahead and tap the little I button right there and then scroll down to where it says router. And that basically is the direct connection of the box. That number is 192.168.3.1. It might be the same for you, might be different. We're just going to go ahead and load that up in our Safari web page, and then we'll have all the settings uh, at our fingertips. All right, so now that we've got that web page connected, we can see a bunch of different settings here you really don't have to worry about at all. Though there is one thing you want to make sure is on, and that is Bluetooth modem. Basically, to make a long and complicated and boring story short, the Tesla needs to have an active internet connection in order to connect to anything. Any Wi-Fi network, it can't be any sort of fake network or just a, uh, a Wi-Fi network with no internet connected to it. It has to have, for whatever reason, security or not, a valid internet connection. So while this box itself doesn't need an internet connection because all the data is happening from your phone anyways, it still has to 
have an active internet connection just to trick the Tesla to connect to it, which is why you can either put a micro SIM in there or just a regular old SIM card or whatever the form factor is and have an active cellular connection that way. Or what you can do is go to the Bluetooth modem settings, turn that on, and then use your phone's data connection over Bluetooth to give it internet. Basically, it's a thing with the Tesla. The Tesla requires an internet connection. You've got to give it one way or another. So when you see in the manual, it says SIM card, you don't need a SIM card. You just got to make sure Bluetooth modem is turned on. I know it sounds complicated, but I promise it's not. What you also might notice right here is that where it says online updates, it's just spinning and spinning and saying checking for updates, which is a problem because if this box isn't up to date, you're likely going to get an error and the car won't connect to it. I've seen this brought up over and over again. You're going thinking what in the world is going on? I, I can see the web page. I can see the settings. What do I do? Let me show you how to fix this problem. So if this is the issue you're having, you want to go back into your Wi-Fi settings. You want to forget this network and just sort of Un, you know, forget about it, unjoin it, get rid of it completely. Then what you actually want to do, and I know this sounds a little counter uh, productive here, but this is what you want to do is you want to go into your Bluetooth settings and then you want to connect to the box via Bluetooth instead of over Wi-Fi. So at the bottom of my Bluetooth menu, I've got auto kit. And again, we're going to go through the same process. It might prompt us for a password. It might not. It's going to say, hey, is this the right thing? Yeah, of course it is. We're going to hit pair. We will allow... And now that we've connected, presumably over Bluetooth, we should be able to fix that problem. So now if we go back to that same page and we refresh it, we will now see the option, there we go right there, to run an update. I'm not going to get into the technical things about it because I don't really understand all of it, but basically there's another mechanism to connecting to it. Bluetooth is going to pass over that data connection, and now we're able to run an update and actually install it. I've also seen uh, in some instances where you'll be prompted to update over Wi-Fi and then it just keeps failing and failing and failing. Basically, if you have any issues either getting the update to show up or installing the update, connect over Bluetooth instead of over Wi-Fi uh, and that should fix your problem because again, our Bluetooth is handling the data connection needed to make this magic happen. So do that and then once this update is done, I'll show you how we get everything up and running on the car. Now, one of my favorite parts of making these Tesla Focus videos is showcasing some things to you guys of what you can do to enhance your Tesla experience, add new features, unlock functionality you didn't know existed, and just make it easier to live with your Tesla every single day. And one of the best ways that I love to do all of that, plus so much more, is using the Terry app for the iPhone and also the Apple Watch too. Terry is basically a better version of the Tesla app in every single way. It's gonna supercharge your Tesla experience by giving you super easy access to all the controls you need for your Tesla, all beautifully laid out on one single page, you know, having to dig through menus. And like I mentioned, Terry has got a full-fledged, full-featured companion watch app that lets you control your Tesla right from your wrist and even be able to set your Apple Watch as a Bluetooth key so you can control and drive your Tesla. No need to have your phone or key cards, but just with the Apple Watch on your wrist, Works beautifully, so easy to set up, and really, really cool. Terry is also packed with so many other features like additional reports you can dive into. You can even make your own custom light show from right within the Terry app. You can sort of listen to a song, a tap around with the animations uh, you want to create, and then have this beautiful light show super easily on your Tesla that you made right from Terry. It is super easy and super fun. And personally, I love that Terry is packing full Siri shortcut support here as well, so you can set up automations and different voice commands and even uh, control your Tesla right from your uh, Siri on your Apple device, even the ability to open a door, for example, just by telling Siri to have your Tesla open that door. If you're looking for a really easy way to control your Tesla from your iPhone, from your Apple Watch, and just a really easy app to use that makes controlling your Tesla easy and also gives you advanced features, Terry is the way to go. If you want to learn more, check it out for yourself and start using it totally for free, totally for free, folks. Hit the link right down below to learn more and check it out. And also, if you want to unlock all the premium features, you can use the code Robert and that'll get you you all those premium features for just 20 bucks for the entire year. A really great deal. So again, learn more and check out Terry for yourself right now at the link down below. Okay, so a minute later, that update has run. Everything is good to go. And that's it, folks. That's all you need to do. You should never have to ever go to this page again. Literally, I just bring it up because if there are issues connecting with the car, it's likely because your software is out of date. That's how you do a software update. Now that that's done, 
and I cannot break my Tesla screen by hitting my phone into it, let's actually get CarPlay set up here. So what we now want to do is connect the car to this box over Wi-Fi. And again, you can even just hide this box. I just have it out for demo purposes. There's the box. Here's the car. Let's make this magic happen wirelessly. So what we've got to do here is go into our settings. We want to go up here to LTE. And we want to get Wi-Fi magic going here. It's going to be auto kit again. It's the same thing as our phone. And again, password's 88. So it's 88888888 or, you know, consult your instruction manual. But that should be what it is. And then it should connect and everything should be good to go. Again, if it doesn't connect, uh oh, maybe I put the password in wrong. 88888888. Um, if it doesn't connect, again, it's likely a software issue. So be sure to check with that. Hopefully this works. There it goes. It connected. We got the green check mark and we're good to go. But again, if it doesn't connect, it's probably either you've got fat fingers like me and you put it in wrong or you did the wrong uh, software version, which you've got to make sure you update. Now that's up and running. We also want to make sure that we don't lose connection to this when we ship from park to drive. So if we tap on this, we want to hit remain connected in drive because what'll happen is by default, for whatever reason, when you shift from park to drive, or now you do it on screen like this, it'll disconnect Wi-Fi, which we don't want because we don't want to break our CarPlay experience. So make sure that is checked. And then now what we want to do is load up the browser and go to the special website for this. Again, consult your instruction manual for whatever the address might be. But in this case, it's a website called testpush.com. So if we go to TES... P-U-S-H dot com. And if we hit enter, it's going to load up. Hey, there we go. It's CarPlay. It might dump you into a setting page that looks like this first. Um, there are some other additional settings you can get into and stuff like that. Uh, but hopefully you should be dumped into CarPlay, which looks like this. And there we go. We've now got full on Apple CarPlay right inside of our Tesla all of our apps are here. We can open messages. We can open Google Maps. A little finicky, which I'll talk about more in a moment. But hey, you want Waze or Google Maps? Here it is. You want to go to Starbucks or whatever? You can do that. You can navigate around all in here with the magic of Apple CarPlay right inside of your Tesla. And to be clear, this is not a stripped down version or a hacked version of CarPlay. This is the real legitimate CarPlay running from your phone to your Tesla, which means all of the regular CarPlay apps are going to work. If you want to use Google Maps or Waze, for example, like let's say I want to load up Waze. There we go. I've got Waze. It's going to work here just like you have it in anything else. If you want to go to Starbucks, you can say, hey, um, Starbucks. And there we go. We can, well... It didn't get me right there, but you guys get what I'm saying here. Uh, that's going to work just like that full on ways here. We've got other apps like maybe you've got a podcast app you really like. Maybe you're a fan of PlugShare, which is going to allow you to uh, see different EV charging stations around you that you wouldn't see in the Tesla uh, built in map. There are lots and lots of options. I mean, I don't have to explain to you why you'd want CarPlay in your Tesla. But if you want a CarPlay in your Tesla, here it is. Uh, I've got Audible. It's just it's really nice to have additional media options map options. Uh, there's an app here, I think, that does weather called My Weather Radar. Let's see if I can get to that. Uh, having some issues trying to get over there. There we go. Oh, and I'll talk about this in a second. The interface isn't perfect, but there we go. My Weather Radar and I've got to accept some stuff, but there we go. There are a bunch of different CarPlay apps you can choose from. Uh, I'll leave a couple of my favorites down below in the description, but PlugShare is great. Audible, having different messaging apps is great. Waze is a big one. Um, or maybe you just prefer like the Spotify controls that look like this. Whatever the case may be, you've now got full-on CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly no cables or anything. Again, I can just take this and shove it down here. I never even need to see it again. This is all running wirelessly right on our Tesla, just like this. So let's address a couple of things here real quick. One is that where is the audio coming from? This is just video. Where is audio? If you don't hear audio, you're having audio issues, make sure your phone is connected to the Tesla over Bluetooth, which it should be. And that is the audio source because while the video is going to 
got sleep music here for my, my two-year-old. While that is going to go through uh, the browser here for video, the audio is going to remain through Bluetooth. So make sure your audio source is Bluetooth, and that is going to match up. If you control audio through there, it's going to play through your car, but that's how the audio is handled. And then, of course, the big thing I always get questions about is the lag. It's laggy. It's flaky. What's the deal with that? Okay, this isn't an issue with a particular box, but it's an issue with this workaround. The big problem, as you can see here, is that, well, Tesla doesn't natively support CarPlay, so this is the best implementation, uh, implementation rather, you can do, which is browser-based, and while full-on touch support here does work, you can see, obviously, it's not always the best. Generally speaking, I find it pretty good. The speed here, you might notice, this isn't anything to do with the car or the box, it's just because this is literally being, being done on a website, which is not the way it's intended. Same for missed touches as well. All of the gesture areas you'd normally have in a CarPlay head unit just aren't here because again, this is a hack. It's a workaround because it's not officially supported. With that said though, while there are, I think you can kind of make this easier by just by tapping these dots down here. Yeah, maybe uh, scrolling this way always isn't the best, but what I'm trying to say here as I have issues is that it's the best you can get. I mean, there is no alternative. And if you really do want CarPlay and you value the experience these apps provide, um, this is it. And it's very unfortunate that there isn't another way to do this. Uh, but the caveats you're seeing here, these limitations aren't from the box. They're not even necessarily from Tesla. It's just because this is literally streaming like a website to your Tesla. Uh, so there are going to be compromises. It's not going to be as fast as the native Tesla apps. I mean, I can jump in here to Apple Music. I can jump in here to podcast and theater. This is going to be way faster than anything on CarPlay, but it's not CarPlay. And if you want full-on CarPlay, this is what it is. And also it's going to live in the browser. There is no way to make this full screen. There's no way to change the size. Again, because of the workaround here, it lives in the browser just like this. And that's it. With that said though, all of your normal CarPlay things would work here. So you could jump in here again. Sorry for that. You could jump in here to settings like you would adjust any CarPlay head unit and you could adjust the wallpaper and you could adjust the appearance and stuff like that. Siri is going to work your messages, all that's going to work. But the issues you're going to notice here with touch and what some might perceive as lag, it's not really lag. It's just because this is sort of a hacky workaround that's living in the browser. So it's not always going to be perfect. But again, full on CarPlay apps are going to work here. Waze is going to work here. You've got Google Maps. All of that's going to work. And again, it's going to work and run right as you're uh, driving. And you can see and control here on the big screen. And again, all the CarPlay things are going to work. So while it's not the perfect solution, which would be Tesla natively supporting it, it's the best solution we've got right now. And it is really nice that all of your apps are going to work. And again, like I said, yes, touchscreen support here is supported. Like if I was to jump into uh, Google Maps, for example, and I want to uh, go around like I would in any CarPlay unit. It, that's going to work, um, but you are going to notice a little bit of lag here, but that's just because of the nature of this workaround, which is just the technology we're limited to, not because of the box, not because of the Tesla, but just because this is the hack that exists as of right now. So touch points might not be perfect, but certainly better than nothing. And if you wanted CarPlay and you wanted any solution, this is how to do it really, really simply. So there you go, folks. That's how to get wireless CarPlay or Android Auto to work on your Tesla in 2024. Just like CarPlay here, Android Auto is going to work the same way. All the apps, all the features are all going to work on here. Touch isn't going to be perfect, but that's just the nature of the beast here with this workaround. But if you wanted to get your CarPlay apps, you wanted more media options, you wanted Waze or Google Maps or whatever the app may be, on your Tesla. This is how to do it without having to add a second screen. You don't have to unbolt anything or do anything like that. Here's how to do it really, really simply. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. Also, just want to give a big thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring and supporting this channel. They have got over 400 artworks in their collection from names you've heard of, Picasso, Warhol, and Banksy. And as the economy right now is up and down and up and down, you're probably looking for a different investment strategy. And one of the best places to actually put your money is in fine art. Billionaires know it, banks know it, and now you can get a piece of the action as well. Masterworks makes it so simple, so easy. Over 900,000 users have signed up. And if you want to get immediate access, skip that wait list. All you've got to do is scan the QR code on screen right there or head to masterworks.art slash Rosenfeld to learn more and get started today. And again, skip that waitlist and get immediate access right now. I'm Robert Rosenfeld and I'll see you in the next one.